The Caradron Overlord Star Collecting Box. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Games Workshop fans. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? Where I'm currently in the shadow of this great box. This is the Caradron Overlord's Star Collecting Box. You get your 10 figures in here. It's a wonderful little model kit. So without further ado, let's open this thing up and see what's in the box. And now we take to the friendly skies as we open up our Star Collecting Caradron Overlords box. And here's what the old box looks like. You get a lot of cool things in this kit. Four complete units. You are getting an Endron Master. Five gun... <laughs> Grunstock Thunders, pardon me. Three Sky Wardens and a Grunstock Gun Hauler for an amazing little armada here. So I'm just going to flip the box over so you can see what's going on on the back. I know the sides are exciting, but I'll leave that to your visit to the local game shop. <laughs> so anyway, here's our Andron Master. And they give you this nice little sculpted guy that you got to build up. There's the colors you need in order to paint them. And here we have the Grunstock Thunderers with their big massive guns going on here. Uh, these colors you can also use on these guys, I suppose. And then here's our Sky Wardens here with their little balloon packs. These are uh, etheric spheres that they can fill up with a special type of ghosty gas to make them float around. And then of course the main beauty model of this is our Grunstock gun hauler right here. A massive ship with a massive good set of guns and a, a little air anchor here and a couple of bombs. One with a screw end just to uh, make it a little tougher for the enemy. So uh, let's take a look and see what's in this box. So, as we open up the box, we are greeted by this wonderful Star Collecting Caterion Overlord's instruction sheet that has full color to it, which is a lot nicer than the uh, earlier, maybe not Star Collecting books, but some of the other things I've reviewed on this channel from long ago. They had black and white instructions and smaller. This is a full booklet size, you know, um, oh, what is the size? 11 by 8.5 standard almost standard paper size as this purple paper helps us here you know okay so opening this up well let's open it up this way gives you a good rundown of all the important things in many different languages as in familiarizing yourself with the parts they show you the tools from games workshop that you will need uh, a mold line remover side cutters and of course your glue and a bunch of the safety features and the optional symbol of the two gears going together. And uh, there's a choice of parts one here as well. Okay, so we just slide this over to here to see the actual first page of our model building. And you have your gunnery sergeant and thunder A. So they give you the area of the gunnery sergeant. Uh, you can either use these as a these are your variations, of course. Uh, <clears throat> so these are computer-generated graphics here, and they've got different colors symbolizing which parts you can use and where to glue them to and all this other sort of thing. And what, yeah, where to apply the glue, that sort of stuff. And as you can see, these are quite exquisite-looking instructions, carrying on with all the different bits and pieces. Just move this little light here a bit. Ah. I don't know if that's helping. Okay, <laughs> so anyway. And uh, there, of course, is Thunderer number one on the next page. And getting through to the guys. And then here we have the Sky Wardens going together. You can see their little flotation orbs and how they're gluing to the back, much like sort of a, a jet packs and that sort of thing. 
Jules Verne style of uh, army you're getting with this. <clears throat> Which is pretty cool, a steampunk type of thing. Here's the different weapons going into the end of the gun. It's like a. We have a grapple launcher, the sky hook, and the drill cannon. The different ends going into our guns. This is uh, with ethermatic volley gun. Uh, these are the sky wardens, of course. And with vulcanizer pistol and sky pike. So there you go. Quite a lot of good building options on these guys. And as we get to here, you got your choice of different heads and helmets and the different bits for this guy. Oops. <laughs> then we're getting into our main guy here, the end riggers. Or no, these are still part of the Sky Warden. So you do have some choice with uh, Sky Wardens or end riggers. So they do give you some optional guys in this. And then we get into this side, of course. Okay, and then the instructions carry on with our uh, Grunstock Gun Hauler. This is the airship that comes with the kit, and it's uh, quite a neat piece. We'll be looking at this when we look at our plastic components. And of course, they're showing us here that we do actually have some Dwarden crew members that are gluing in here to man the guns and to pilot the sky ship. So, really cool. There's that anchor there. There's <laughs> a lot of nice detail on this kit, too. The instructions keep continuing on, by the way. So, there's our next page. It's showing our bombs going on here. It's upside down. <laughs> uh, different cannon mounts and um, torpedo things you can put on there. And then that's the bottom part of the ship. So now we get into the actual canisters and whatnot that make this thing float. So these are the supports, your upper supports, and then there's the big ball dome with the uh, rotor engines, which are very similar to the newer plastic gyrocopter, which is in the Dwarden army, the Dispossessed army. Actually, Iron Wheeled Arsenal. <laughs> A lot of uh, different dwarf armies. At least I didn't say Fire Sliders. Oh, I just did. Anyway, so... We've got our uh, cross braces, very much like um, the old uh, Zeppelins and things had. And then there's the ball tops going on. And then the skyship over here mounting to our oval base with the uh, clear rod. This one has a ball end on it so you can pitch and uh, move this thing around much in the same way as the older, or the the current gyrocopter model for Iron Wheeled Arsenal. And then on our final page, we're getting the en <coughs> sorry, the Endrin Master, who is sort of the repairman general of this particular star collecting box. And now we're getting into their war scrolls here and in different languages down there. But there's uh, your movement, your save, your bravery, your wounds, and what the different weapons do. So you can play this start collecting box right out of, from opening it and putting it together. There's a war scroll for the guns, Grund stock thunderers, pardon me. And look at all the weapons they have, it, they can use here. It's a quite an amazing little war scroll. Okay, our adventure continues here as we have also the Grund stock thunderers. Sorry, that's just a continuation of the uh, the different languages. <laughs> then we have our Sky Wardens here. And what they can do. A lot of things with the grap Grapnel Launchers and the uh, Sky Mines. This is some pretty cool heavy duty stuff. Okay. And we're carrying on with the languages. Then we have our End Riggers. And their war scroll, followed by the Grunstock gun hauler war scroll. This is the actual airship. Wounds of 10, move of 12. 
Uh, lots of cool weaponry on here with, with good range. Um, bomb racks, escort vessel, which is what it is. A head full. Those are uh, your command abilities or abilities. And then at the very end, they give you a battalion for this particular box. This is for doing uh, small games. So that you can get, uh, of course, this is what you need in your organization. The Hammer Heft Prospectors consists of the following units an Endrin Master, one unit of Gunstruck Thunderers, uh, one unit of Sky Wardens, and one Gunstruck Gun Hauler. And then if you have all that, you have contractual obligations as your abilities. Do not take Battleshock tests for the Grunstock Thunderers from this battalion while the Endrin Master from this battalion is on the battlefield. So as long as you have an Endrin on the battlefield, Endrin Master, pardon me, you do not need to take Battleshocks for this battalion, which is quite nice. And then that concludes it, and it says here on the back, Far above the highest mountain peaks, a new power has arisen. The Cadron Overlords, or Caradron Overlords, pardon me, expand your army. And what they are saying is to go and get yourself the battle tome for the Caradron Overlords like this, because inside it'll show you a lot of cool artwork, backstories, and also contains your artifacts of power, uh, descriptions on each of the different guys, uh, actually units I guess. Uh, there are your war scroll battalions, and of course getting toward the back here, your war scrolls for different guys, different characters that are not included in the set, as well as there is a group of, pardon me, battle plans in here, and uh, painting, and all kinds of goody goodies. <laughs> so make sure when you get this star collecting box that you check out the uh, Battle Tome selection and look for the Caradron Overlord's Battle Tome that goes with this kit. So now without further ado, let's take a look at the plastic pieces and see how cool those are. Let's begin looking at our plastic pieces with the most uninteresting, but the most crucial of all, our actual bases. So these are important to keep our models up in the air or on the ground or wherever they need to be. So first we're looking at the Grunstock Gun Hauler Base. This of course is a large oval base. And I'm going to keep these guys in the plastic bag because there's no sense in them going everywhere and getting lost. So these are 32 millimeter round bases that we need. And the Games Workshop has been kind enough to provide us with some extra bases here for our Grunstock Gun Hauler. These three are used to keep it up in the air but you really only need one they're molded in clear so that it looks like they're floating the models are floating i mean not the bases of course you got the rounded end here ball and socket type attachment and then here we've got three shorter bases for of course our sky wardens to keep those guys up in the air as well so that's the bases and i think i've got them all covered so let's move on to our actual exciting figure pieces. So after we looked at those exciting bases, here's our actual first sprue piece. This one here, of course, is for our Endrin Master, the main hero of our Star Collecting box. And as you can see, this one little sprue here is all self-contained. Uh, he's got a right and a left hand side boots going on, little hoses for his pack. There's that giant hammer that he's got, the nice face mask, um, that's his pack plus the back of a leg or something to that effect. Uh, yeah, okay. Then uh, what do we got over here? A chest plate. I'll just turn this over, there's some nicer detail on this side as well. Ah, now we can see this better. That's his backpack with the steam uh, tower going on there. 
more pieces to the backpack, rods and pulleys and a tank. The detail on the hammer there, as well as the backpack and the boots with the little <laughs> assisting pistons so he can carry all this armor and stuff on him, as well as wield that gigantic hammer. So let's just move this up a little into the camera lens. Hopefully I won't go too out of focus. Look at that amazing detail that uh, the designer has put into here. The sculptors and everything created the original models and how nicely they translated into the actual sprue that we're getting here. Very good work. This will be a nice one to paint up. Very cool stuff going on. Check out White Dwarf magazines. See how people paint these things. Look them up online. You will be amazed. I will not lie. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, let's see. There's the mask there. As you can see, he's got some like gemstone type eyes going on there for uh, I guess looking for um, etherical undead and help him in the navigation and everything else that he needs to do. Uh, this is a cool model as he can fix airships and other neat things. You have to look in the rules of course. Make sure I'm not making that up. All right now let's look at the other sprues in this kit. And here's our second sprue that we're going to be looking at. This is the one for the Grunstock Thunderers. This sprue includes the, the icon for the Honor Bearer, as well as parts for our Gunnery Sergeant, including this big, <laughs> cool-looking gun here. The detail on this is excellent. I've seen uh, in some of the White Dwarfs, they talk about removing this ring and taking out the Icon Bearer's thing and attaching it to one of the ends of the hammers that's on here. Or uh, maybe it's for, oh, sorry, the hammer for the Endrin Master. So they glue this on the end of the hammer to make it look sort of like a, a big ax or something. So I'm just gonna turn this one over and you can see how, oops, there we go. You can see how Games Workshop uses a leg in the front that's molded 360 all the way around and then it breaks open into a hollow bit so you can glue the chest plate onto there. So I'm just going to bring this up to the camera lens so you can see the crisp detail. Uh, there's the top of the da, 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 the honor bearers standard so you can see the cool detail on there, the little gear inside that or symbol I guess. These are uh, proton packs, sort of like Ghostbusters. Get a little more detail in that. Check out the rivets and the belt and everything on the back of this guy's armor. There's the armor plate with a rune face on there. Getting back to the old dwarf roots. One of the face masks. And of course, the nice detail work on the guns. This one is particularly interesting. <laughs> this almost looks like, I don't know how many of you guys ever looked at your car brake system, but the way this little container is, it's almost like a, a brake uh, cylinder where you uh, put in your brake fluid. <laughs> brake fluid reservoir. You can hook this up to your brake lines of your car, you know. No, anyway. <laughs> but as you can see, it's uh, molded 360 degrees around this gun. It's very nice in the back of the pack there. Very cool. Separate leg, in case you need an extra. In case you need a leg to stand on. <laughs> okay, that's bad. All right, let's carry on with the next set of sprues. Now we have our third sprue that we're looking at here for the Grunstock Thunderers. And uh, this is the rest of the crew after, of course, our champion that we just looked at. So, there's some really nice detail on here. I know this kind of looks a little bit weird as we're looking at it this way. But, of course, here are the guys. And the detail on these is really fantastic. I'll bring up this sprue to our camera lens in just a second here. But I want to show the different guns. Here's this multi-gun with uh, five barrels. There's uh, some of their backpacks. The front armor. All these nice longer rifles, grenade guns. This one's a gun with the grenade in it. 
bunch of faces. I do believe this was one of the leg pieces. It broke off. It's I got it in the box. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, lots of great... I, now, I've seen these guys done up like Ghostbusters, where um, guys have used these as like proton packs or something funny, and then they've got ghostly, etherical streams shooting out of the guns. Just turn this over here for a minute. You can see a bit more of the detail and how these guys are done. So the legs are one piece, and then the the chest plate glues on to the back plate here. And of course, it, the gun detail is, well, 360 degrees around. Oops, wiggling out a little bit. Okay, let's uh, examine some of this more closely. So let's start off with this really cool looking grenade gun. See the detail on that? That's some real hot stuff there. And then, of course, I got this a bit backward because that's the inside of the gun. Let's turn it over. There you got the outside of the gun. And look at that nice detail. They even have little holes going on here in the side of the barrel. Nice uh, place to put a bunch of little dots for uh, lights and energy. Of course, look at the uh, breastplate there. Real neat stuff. See, there's the pack. See how that looks like a Ghostbusters proton pack? Kind of cool. Very cool. Very nice. Okay, there's another chest plate there. There's the back of the guys. Just turn her over again so you can see the detail on the legs. Really nice stuff there. Nice stuff. Okay. Look at that volley type gun. That's a neat looking thing. Really fresh. Real crisp detail. Really good work on the part of the Games Workshop designers. So I'm just going to put this back and we can carry on with our next part sprue. And here's our fourth sprue in the series. You get five sprues in this kit, by the way. Now this one is a big sprue. It's actually double because you can see there's one frame. And then there's little runners in here for the second frame. Now if uh, Games Workshop releases this as a smaller box, they usually clip the frames here and then they'll bring this one over there on top of that just to make it uh, one thing. But what we're looking at here is the frame for the Sky Wardens as well as I do believe... No, this has got to be all the Sky Wardens in here. Yeah, it is all the Sky Wardens. Okay, let's start this again. <laughs> Now we begin, begin. Now we conclude. Now we carry on with our fourth parts tree in this kit. And this is a rather large one, as you can tell. The purple paper is right to the edge of this sprue. So this is a eight by 11, more or less, the size of the box. Uh, now this is the sprue for our Sky Wardens. And uh, if you buy a small box of Sky Wardens, what Games Workshop will do will snap these apart and move this part tree on top of the other one, put the bases in it, and there's your kit for your Sky Wardens. But as you can tell, there's a lot going on here. These are the two halves to their flying apparatus, the frames, their weapons, the harpoons, um, some counterweights, I suppose, different hand weapons, little sharp razory swords. Uh, what else? Their bodies are in here, their legs, their boots, everything. So, like I've done with the other sprues, let's bring this up to the camera and take a look at the excellent detail going on here. All right, let's just balance my arms in here. This is a good height. So there's some of the parts for the uh, floating chambers and look at the uh, nice detail on that air suit you can see padding in there around the head around the neck and the shoulders so that the little guys keep warm as they're floating around in the cold cold air and look at the little grills and everything you're getting in this really nice stuff the uh, fin work on that support 
the little boots. <laughs> okay, and looking at these counterweights that are hanging off their belts. Pretty cool stuff. The detail work on the gun and greaves is really nice. Look at the little swords with the saw blades. Drills. Hand drills in case they have to go up there and, you know, do stuff. There's a nail gun in case they need to uh, fix a roof. No, I'm just kidding. But that's sort of what some of these guns look like. Okay, check out that spear there. Real nice detail on that. Little face helmets. The thing that makes these different from like the dispossessed dwarfs that I usually build is that you can paint these guys all in iron colors and uh, no one will really complain about that. Iron, metal, brass, any of that. Gold, all that kind of stuff. Looks like little bombs right here. Okay, I'm going to turn this over quickly and see again nice detail on those backpacks. <laughs> I almost said proton pack there. There's a gun detail at the end of the barrels. And as we saw in the instructions, you get many different options for the guns. So the counterweight things again. Those could even be chain bombs, grenades. I have to look it up in their war scroll. It's a little, let me give you a hand right there. <laughs> Okay, anyway, <clears throat> so this is our fourth tree, and then we can get on to our fifth tree coming up next. And now we examine our final parts tree, the fifth parts tree for our Grunstock gun hauler. This is the actual airship, and I was trying to figure out what these things are called. They're called ether spheres. They are, the ether is what these guys are trapping and that helps them float these gigantic steel cylinders or brass or copper whatever color you want to paint them and uh, these all fill up with ether energy and it helps keep all this stuff floating so there we go that's what this stuff is and that's what it does and it's really cool because it gives all the models in our Caradron overlords that have these uh, gives them abilities to fly which is a neat thing because they ignore terrain features. Anyway, let's examine our ship here. This is a really cool one. It's crewed by two guys. And of course, there's the hull, our hull plates. Oops, there goes me moving the parts tree. This is another big one, of course, sucks up the whole size of the box. There's a nice, nice steering wheel there. The ship's wheel type of wheel. The rudder, now you don't glue on here, and you can actually have this rudder positionable, which is really cool. So when you're on your gaming table, you can actually rudder right, you know, port to starboard and that sort of thing, and, and move this over a little bit so it actually reflects in the game. There's our bombs. Some of these have drill ends on them, which would be fun to paint up. The cross braces are over here. The strut supports for our ether domes. You know, there's the deck with the gun and the, a little uh, piloting wheel. And then we got our big blades here, much like the gyrocopter, and our uh, directional rudders. Actually, no, these are the the little wings on the side where these um, corkscrew motor ends go. There's our anchor, my favorite part. And if nautical nonsense is what you seek. <laughs> You want to build this ship. Uh, I'm just going to turn this over here to the back side. Uh, there's some more detail going on. You can see this is actually a, a real dome. There's a little walkway panel on there. <laughs> Don't step here. <laughs> you know, the nice rivet details on those blades and everything. Little wings. And really nice stuff. Really. Uh, Jules Verne style steam era. Okay, let's bring this up to the lens. You can see the detail on that ether dome. Really cool stuff. Ether sphere. Look at the detail on that. Okay, there's the walkway bits, little grates and everything, the little rivets going in here. 
just real steampunk really good work on the designers a real unique feel to uh, updated dwarfs there's or dwarden I should say because that's more copyright <laughs> type stuff so really good detail look at the the flight suit is really cool there's the rotors you can see nice little indentations for each of the bolts whoop I'm moving my display here my stand the camera stand okay there's the little bits these also look like you could uh, pitch them up and down on the side of the ship too so some really cool stuff a functional model there's the anchor yeah. Uh, there's a smaller ether sphere, ether dome in here. This one goes into the deck somewhere, just sort of underneath the bigger one, toward the back. Sort of a, I suppose, stability. Much like how a helicopter has the rear rotors as well as the main top ones. There's that steering ship wheel. Some really cool stuff there. And it's even got a, a rune face in the center. And our bombs. So some real death from above, as it were. <laughs> There's a stretch. Look at this uh, instrument panel gauge. Steam style, like a locomotive. Really cool. Really cool stuff. So I, uh, I'm not going to lie here. The reason why I'm doing this What's in the Box the Caradron Overlords are part of the the new hotness, I suppose. Although I'm a little bit outdated from the release date. This came out about a year ago. Um, <clears throat> but the reason why I am actually doing this What's in the Box is because I want to try to upgrade my Dwarden Dispossessed Army. These guys can ally with the Dispossessed, but maybe it's time I start getting into the more Age of Sigmar geared armies and uh, I hate to say let go of my past a little but the new uh, Warhammer Cities book is coming out I just need a temporary filler and since I already like all things Dwarden I'm gonna give these guys a whirl so that's what I'm gonna do and that will conclude our look at the Caradron Overlords Start Collecting Box. Well, I hope you enjoyed this amazing review of the Caradron Overlords Box and that you will start collecting it and maybe win some great games with it. With all the flying stuff and the other cool, strong Caradron Overlords guys in there. <laughs> So anyway, don't forget to come down to Monster Hobbies in person and check out our big Games Workshop shelf here where we've got stuff like War Cry, Silver Tower, and we still carry some of the older kits like the Lorthin Skycutter, the Wood Elf Glade Guard, Orc Boys from Greenskins, and Empire Greatswords. So don't forget to check out that stuff if you need it. And until next time, good luck on the battlefield.